Thanks for tuning in today. I'm John Holmes, and today's video is gonna go over the charger on the Suron B. In a previous video, I discussed how I wanted an aftermarket charger for my Suron. And a few people had questions on, well, why would you want that? Uh, what's wrong with a stock charger? And some other questions that I'm not even sure why they asked them, but we're gonna cover at least the ones that are pertinent to this bike. So here is the stock charger. It's a pretty hefty charger, fairly large, and it charges the pack at 10 amps, which means that uh, since we have a 30 amp hour pack, it's gonna take about three hours to charge. And that's a really nice speed for it, but it is uh, physically large. It is also just basically loose components inside soldered to a board. And this is not gonna be good with vibration, and that means that I cannot mount it on the bike and just ride around with it without damaging uh, in pretty quick uh, pretty quick hurry uh, I'd end up damaging the controller so the reason that I would want an aftermarket controller is so that I could mount it on the bike uh, primarily something that is essentially fully potted and, and capable of that and what I chose was the cycle satiator this is made by grin technology or ebikes.ca if you want to go to their website and it is not nearly as powerful as the stock one in that this will only charge at between four and five amps at the output voltage that we need for the battery however it is far slimmer so if I wanted to throw this into a backpack and go somewhere I'm, I'm definitely not going to choose the big one unless I have time constraints on the uh, charging time so if I'm gonna go somewhere and I want a quick top off or an emergency charger just in case this is far far better on the size so this is my choice for the aftermarket charger now the other thing that I would want to do is to mount the charger to the bike and there's literally no place that would fit this charger it it just there, there's this would be about it but it's going to get hit by the tire if I go into full compression so it would take like a custom bracket somewhere there's no uh, there's just really no room for something this large so what I would like to do is make a little bracket for this guy to either go up here or I'm actually going to make a, a secondary seat for this bike I do believe and I'll have it mount somewhere right in here uh, there's actually enough room as it sits to do this if we get this old license plate thing out of the way um, so that's kind of just a project for me figure out where I could mount this I mean for all that it matters I could honestly even put it here it would be a little bit in the way of my knees when I'm riding I think but it's a pretty sleek it's a pretty sleek charger so that that wouldn't be too bad but the takeaway is that this is small enough that I at least have a chance of mounting it on the bike. I mean, for all that it matters, I could put it on the front, I guess, uh, and it won't get damaged by the vibration. So that's kind of my main want for the small one. But the other issue that I have with the stock charger, it's really powerful. It outputs about 10 amps, but that also means that it pulls a lot of current from the wall. And since I'm in the U.S., we're charging on 110 volts, and uh, I calculated it that it's probably pulling about 8 amps from the wall, maybe 6 amps, depending on how it's rectified. Uh, and that, that's just a lot of current going through these, these normal connections. I actually had some issues one day where I started smelling burning electronics, and it's because the plug that goes into the charger, just your, your standard you know, US style power plug that you would find on the back of your computer or something like that. Um, it was actually starting to smell a little smoldery. And we can actually look inside and see on these pins. I'm not sure if the camera will close up on that, but there was a little bit of arcing that was happening at the tips of these pins just because the connection is not quite as secure as what I would like to see on this. And since they're pushing 10 amps out of this guy, the input side's pulling, you know, eight amps, maybe six amps. And that's enough to cause some problems over time, either heat saturation or arcing as we've seen here. And I think I'm actually just gonna turn the, the power down on this charger. That's gonna be another video because I have to take it apart to uh, find the little potentiometer where we adjust the charge rate. But yeah, it's just a little too hot for uh, for my recommend or for for my comfort level and, and not the physical charger not getting hot but i mean just too too fast of a charge and that may cause problems like let's say i've got a, a 
janky plug on the wall that I'm charging somewhere. I plug this guy into it and it's pulling so much wattage that it may end up either tripping a breaker or making the outlet catch on fire. It's just right there on the edge of comfort for me. So I, I kind of want something, at least an option that's not so balls to the wall, high speed charging. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my reason for wanting an aftermarket charger. And uh, really the stock charger is a great charger, but it doesn't quite meet my needs. I think I'd like something that's a little bit uh, cooler coming out of the wall, so to speak. And also mounting it on the bike directly, having something that's fully potted on the inside, waterproof, etc., is really gonna make that uh, possible. And it'll, it'll, it'll be cool to have this guy once I get it running. So yeah, that pretty much covers it. If you got any questions about the charging setup or uh, which model this is, it's basically the high volt model from Grin Tech. I don't think it actually has a model number on it, but yeah, go to the website, ebikes.ca, check it out if you want to. Yeah, any rate, you got more questions, post them down below and I'll see you next time.